Welcome to the Grappling Arts Podcast, where we celebrate the art of professional wrestling, explore wrestling practice, and dig deep into wrestling's rich and varied history. Throughout the series, we will be interviewing leading figures from within independent professional wrestling. Topics will include theatre, sport, storytelling, and performance. If you enjoy the series, please subscribe and leave a review. I am your host, Sam West, co-owner of the independent wrestling promotion, Wrestling Resurgence, which is a theatre-led wrestling company based in the East Midlands. You can also find me at Loughborough University, where I'm a doctoral researcher studying storytelling in professional wrestling. My expert co-host is Resurgence colour commentator Claire Warden, who is a senior lecturer in English and Drama, also at Loughborough University. She's also the co-editor of the fantastic Performance and Professional Wrestling book. For more information about the podcast and Wrestling Resurgence, look us up on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. The theme for this episode is Professional Wrestling Rivalries, and we will be looking at one of Resurgence's greatest rivalries, Kanji vs Charlie Evans. This series of matches took place between November 2018 and August 2019, so if you haven't already, I would highly recommend checking them out on the Resurgence YouTube channel, where you can watch them for free. Enjoy the episode! Just one quick note before we get cracking. Claire and I decided whilst recording to leave in our pre-interview chat. So just in case you think we forgot to edit it, please be aware it is intentional and hopefully it will give you a nice overview of what to expect from the episode. Um, So the way I've structured it uh, is just around the three matches. Um, Right. So we'll start with with a kind of usual... If we... I'll just briefly run through it and then we'll try and record a little preamble. Sure. Um, and yeah, it just starts with the f- asking them to introduce themselves a little bit. I'll, I'll describe the kind of theme, which will be sort of rivalries loosely. Yeah, yeah. Um, start with match one. And I, I guess my questions and sort of interest there. Um, so match sure. one will be... Uh, oh, t- their matches we're g- I'm going to use to structure it. So ah, right, right, right. Got resurgent. it. Yeah, resurgence matches, cool. Yeah, and I think what we're trying to do is weave in references to the matches that they've sent us. Yeah. Rather than uh, look at those individually, because I think that's sure. more interesting. I think people will be more interested in yeah, yeah. their matches, um, and we'll use the, the matches that they sent us as just a way of discussing yeah. Great. different types of things. So in the first one, I was quite interested in... Um, I mean, planning, plan, match planning is probably a theme throughout all of it. Yeah. But then also, um, which I didn't realise, they'd never met each other before that match. So they met each other for the oh, first time. that's at, interesting. That wow. So I wanted to talk about that, um, what it's like turning up to a show, not not knowing the person that you're working with. And, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's would, interesting. So, so because they, um, the one that Kanji set, the Ginny Kanji match, mm. that was... Kanji's second match in Eve and she'd already had the first match had been against Charlie Evans, right? Yeah. yeah. So must have been, yeah. Around the same time? I don't know. There we go. Yeah, I think that one was a little bit I think must they wrestled in Eve so. fairly shortly after yeah, yeah. wrestling with us. Okay. Um well we we can ask them that. Yeah, yeah. So be interested to know what their how the different matches in the different companies have, have gone and what their approaches yeah, have been sure. and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, because they've wrestled in three other companies during this same right. time period, oh, which is quite cool. Um, yeah, so I was quite interested in like getting to know someone through wrestling. Like, what does that yeah, mean yeah. for your in terms of friendship and things like that? Um, and then the two out of three fours match. This is where I thought we could talk about the Japanese stuff because obviously yeah. the, the sort of dynamic of that match is then changed quite significantly from the first one. Um, in terms of what's expected from the match, two out of three fours yeah. match sort of implies a different um, approach, doesn't it? Which is probably more akin to Japanese wrestling. And I think you saw both their influences there. Yeah. In terms of Japanese wrestling, when that ma- how that match was structured and the content of that match, things like that. Um, particularly that women's match that Charlie sent, which I, I don't know if you got yeah. a chance to watch that. It's been crazy. That's one of the best matches I've seen in quite a long time. So, um, and I wondered at, at that point, I might kind of throw in the connection to, to um, Longinotti's Gaia Girls, because of course it's based, mm-hmm. it's around the same time. It's a year earlier that, that Longinotti did that. Uh, and like, for me, that film is like so brutal. It's so mm-hmm. brutal. And you can really, you can totally feel it in that match as well. Like that, it's like really intense and really, mm-hmm. really, really hard. Like 
tough stuff, man. I would not want to be in there. So. Yeah, and then Char- I mean, Charlie's obviously been kind of through that. Yeah. She stayed with yeah. Sendai Girls, which kind of like grew out of that that company. Yes. Um, obviously yeah. led by Nico. So we can ask her what her experience was of that. It should be quite good. Yeah. That's and also, I know Kanji's one of Kanji's aspirations is to um, to go to Japan. So yeah. Why? <laughs> why? Why she wants to do? Why? Yeah. yeah why does she want to put herself through this torture? Uh, <laughs> yeah, <training>? quite. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then the third match. Um, I was going to ask you to start the third the third match by just um, okay. describing, sort of setting the scene a little bit. Um, Me to set the scene, or them to set the scene? You, you, from your perspective, and then then we'll dive into their own process as well. Um, Right. Is there anything in particular that you want me to cover there? No, just your own personal like recollections of that day and the lead up to that day, that sort of thing. So the Um, Iron Woman match. Yeah, I'll I'll start by just saying um, introducing the match, Um, and I I think the other thing, my observation as well, was just how much if you watch the November match and then you watch our that match. Just how much resurgence had changed over yeah, that period. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Um, everything from like the the Joe does a brilliant little opener that sets the scene for the match, and it, it just yeah. the whole the whole package of it feels a lot more yeah um, professional than the, the yeah. first one. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then I yeah, I was them. very excited. I was I was like genuinely like heart pumping excited for that match. Like, mm. and um, I still think it probably ranks as the best one that Joe and I have called together. Mm. Like. It, it everything just felt like sweet all the way through it just felt like we were responding to what was in front of us it was you mm. know exciting and um like really really genuinely cared about what was going on mm. and the audience was incredible in that match so that yeah no of course that would be yeah i mean that that's kind of the theme then when i when, I, when we're diving into yeah. talking to them about the match is that how 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 that build up changes your approach to planning the match in particular yeah what it's like to wrestle when there's that level of expectation whereas in the first match there was no expectation really yeah um how that changes the dynamic and then just a little bit about the emotion at the end of the match um, yeah. from everyone's perspective and Kanji's trip to A&E and bits like that. <laughs> yeah it's actually quite fun so that final bit I've used a couple of times in academic talks actually um like going on in the background as I'm talking about changes in wrestling and stuff like that like it, it's it's now kind of part of um one of the more uh like public facing talks that i give mm-hmm. so i start with like big daddy and giant haystacks just sort of like bashing each other and then i leave again i'm like well what what if this is professional wrestling like kanji versus charlie evans is my example of that because i just think that it says so much about how british wrestling has changed mm-hmm. and progressed um how wrestling has changed and progressed actually um, yeah it felt like a really good like a, just a really good example of, of yeah. wrestling at this moment in time yeah really yeah yeah I, yeah. yeah I definitely agree with that um it just it, yeah kind of resonated with um everything that was going on in British wrestling at that moment yeah I think, which I was really yeah, cool totally um I mean I might, I might depending on how this plays back I might even just use this conversation as the preamble um, oh yeah I think people will get <laughs> yeah, people sure. listening to it will probably uh <laughs> Probably get it. <laughs> we've been through everything now, and they, they know what yeah, expect, yeah, that's so. true enough. Yeah, um, yeah, great. Yeah, um, yeah. Like I said, the um, if if we are going to use this, then I would have wondered whether you had any thoughts on the last episode. Was there anything that the conversation with Mike that kind of stuck with you since then, and things like that? Yeah. So, um, like I've I've been thinking a lot about. Uh, like what, when he was talking about chops, cause like chops is something that I've never, like kind of those big slaps across the chest. I've just never got it, like never, ever got it. Mm. Always just thought, what, what is this? What does this mean? And it's always kind of slightly disturbed my, uh, my, my attempts to, to make wrestling real in inverted commas, if that makes sense. I'm like, why mm. don't they just punch each other across the face? What's going on? And um, I never, understood it until Mike explained it to me and it's changed my entire view of those spots in matches so what he was talking about was like that becomes like a sort of a test of 
a test of manhood really like mm. how can you can, can you stand up to this pain like um, so it's not about trying to beat your opponent quickly. It's not like I'm just going to knock him down. That's it. It's about like how it's it's about the other person. It's about how can I, mm. um, how can I stand up under this like incredible amount of pain? How many of these can I take? And of course, he showed us that uh, match from like Japanese wrestling. We were talking about it, and and um, and he and he that's when he kind of explained that this was actually a kind of it was a test it was supposed to be a test that's the point mm. the point is you're testing each other it's these two big guys facing off against each other who can take the most pain and it's totally changed like my appreciation of certain moves in wrestling mm. i think it because i think the same applies to things like submission holds like it's it's a but i think even more so when it comes to like those those kind of massive chops because like you it, it looks so painful and it makes such a difference to the body. So like I've been thinking quite a lot over the past few weeks about wrestling and pain. Um, and you can see the pain, not just on their faces, not just as performed pain, but actual pain. Like <laughs> I remember Gene Money coming out of a match. I can't even remember which match it was for resurgence. And like his whole chest was like red raw and it was horrendous and i've yeah, never that seen was, that was the same night that was the chris Brooks oh match, was it think, yeah. there we go so like i remember that really well because i was really shocked by it like i've never seen i've never seen a wrestler's body after that mm. up so close like i've seen obviously on television but also and also like just in the ring and i'm sit, i'm in the audience but he kind of walked past and i was just like yeah good job mm. um and i was like man like this is brutal like it looks horrendous and i that's it. so it really changed my my kind mm. of appreciation of what those what that move is meant to do i think uh, in wrestling yeah yeah no i definitely agree with that um it's something that i think you gain a much bigger appreciation of when you watch a lot of live wrestling yeah especially in the on the indies when you're so close to the action i yeah, think on absolutely. on on tv when you see a rick flair chop or something like that obviously it's echoing around the arena and it kind of loses its um I think in, in maybe in North American wrestling until recently, like it was maybe sort of understated the yeah that underplayed, um, and it's only yeah, I guess the Japanese wrestling where it's really popularized, or it becomes a lot more symbolic in Japanese wrestling, which is what you're saying. And like, I think that's what exactly I think. So I think what it helped me to do that conversation was to understand in more depth the symbolic nature of certain wrestling moves. Like I get you know I've I've read wrestling as kind of symbolic since i started appreciating wrestling i mean that's the reason why i got into it in the first place because mm -hmm. of the performance symbols that are within it but i don't think i'd ever quite broken down the individual moves as being symbolic in the way that we managed to get to with mike in the last podcast um, mm -hmm. and I, I it's really it, it makes you watch matches in quite different ways because yeah. you're, you're yeah. thinking about things like well how does this connect with like the power struggle storyline of the whole match, like this mm. moment, this little tiny moment, how is it, how is it playing out? So you start to think kind of macro and micro, yeah. which I, um, is, is just really like super interesting. So, uh, yeah, and I definitely think that's something that will come up again uh, today when we yeah. talk to Charlie and Kanji, because obviously like we said, Char Charlie's got that Japanese experience, but Ka yeah. both are very good strikers. And yes, yeah. I know that I think on commentary and in various matches, you and Joe have pointed out that on a, on a striking basis there, fairly well matched um, yeah. which is which is true um, yeah. but then also charlie uses things like the backdrop suplex which is another has is a, is a move in japanese wrestling that has a lot more symbolism than it does in western wrestling i think yeah for and sure that's some, another move that i underappreciated yeah I mean, yeah. And I actually, think that, yeah that cultural difference as well actually mm. is something that i'm beginning to appreciate a bit more yeah there's quite a good yeah. sequence in the one of the matches that charlie sent us the uh, misawa match where there's repeated yeah. backdrop suplexes which are quite interesting um yeah um cool what time um, are we on yeah i think all... one of the things that struck with me from the last episode which i was thinking about the other day was when he talked about footballers wives <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah sure so he was yeah he used footballers wives as an example of what wrestling is and yeah sort of saying that it's like this kind of soap opera about a real sport and then used footballers wives as his kind of analogy that yeah. um Although it's all fictional, the football in footballers' wives is still football. Yeah, and I've been trying to get my wrap my head around what that means in various different ways. <laughs> so.
So welcome to today's guests, uh, Resurgence champion Charlie Evans and Kanji. Um, today's episode, uh, which is the second episode of the Grappling Arts, we'll be looking at rivalries. And we're going to be looking at the three matches from Wrestling Resurgence between Kanji and Charlie Evans and discussing their different approaches to the matches, what happened during those matches, and different things that influence both of them as wrestlers. Um, so I want to start um, firstly thanking you for both taking part and then also just um, in turn if you could just introduce yourselves. Um, so starting with Charlie. Oh my gosh, hello. I am Charlie Evans. I am currently the Resurgence Champion. Um, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> uh, Kanji? Uh, I'm Kanji uh, from Nottingham and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the I don't have the resurgence championship. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Nor does Charlie at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, and how how's just a, generally like how's lockdown? How how are you coping without wrestling and things like that? I hate not wrestling. Like maybe for a week it was kind of nice to give my body a rest, but I'm, I cannot wait to wrestle again. Uh, Kanji, how, you were out injured when this all started. So how is rehab going? Well, yeah, I've been out since October. So it absolutely sucks. <laughs> um, and when I had my operation on my arm, the doctors said that I'll be out for 10 to 12 weeks and then I'll be back to normal. And that was a lie <laughs> because <laughs> I feel like I'm still not ready to get in the ring yet. Um, but I'm looking forward to it 100%. I can't wait. Awesome. Yeah, I think everyone everyone's looking forward to getting back to some kind of normality. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I want to start by looking at the very first match that the two of you had for Wrestling Resurgence and the first match that you had together as well. Um, so this was Top of the Chops, uh, November 2018. And it was a singles match. Uh, I think it was second on the show. And I believe this was the first time that you'd met each other. Um, so I want to start by just um, asking you both um, what your kind of expectations were going into that match, um, knowing that you were wrestling each other. Um, Kanji, did you know who Charlie Charlie was? What, what were your kind of uh, expectations about that? Yeah, I knew who she was. I'd seen, I'd seen her name pop up quite a lot and her pictures and everything on other shows. Um, this was at a point when this show came up, this was at a point when I hadn't actually wrestled on many shows outside of my school. So I was kind of just being introduced into the British, um, independent scene, um, uh, coming out of house of pain. So just that show in itself was a big opportunity for me. Um, and obviously coming across Charlie's name before as a independent wrestler, um, I think for me it was it was a huge opportunity to wrestle her so um I was so nervous I was so excited but I felt like oh my god right okay I have to really prepare myself for this because I need to show her um and I want to give her a good match you know so it was it was a big thing for me just to even um introduce myself to her um S same question to, to you then, Charlie. Did you know much about Kanji going into that match? Yeah, I had heard of her and I was like super excited because I think originally I, I moved to the UK because I was stuck wrestling the same girls in Australia over and over again. And there was like so many more in the UK. And basically at this point, I think I had wrestled like majority of the of the girls. So to to have like a new person that I hadn't wrestled yet, but I'd heard so much great stuff about because I think she had that four way. Um, at resurgence maybe before that or something and they're like oh she can do a moonsault she can do all this stuff and I was like oh my gosh that's sick because like there's not many girls that can can do moonsaults and like like sort of like fly flippy stuff which is like such a contrast to my style so I was like oh I think we can get something cool out of this I was super excited did you um so when when you both say the day before the days leading up to the show or when you arrive at the show how much is how much are you thinking about kind of what you might do together um before you arrive or is it really just on the day when you meet the person 
Um, I think it's hard when you like haven't seen them wrestle before um, or don't really know them as a person either because I mean it is just like a weird thing being like okay hey so we're gonna go hit each other in in half an hour <laughs> like if you've never really met someone before um, but I think I had messaged someone being like oh like what does she do because I think they'd seen her before um, just to kind of get an idea of how we can like how I can bounce my style off her um, but I think it was mostly like just on the day when we met each other okay cool Claire, what were, what were your expectations, if you can think back to that? Because this is obviously this yeah. is the second resurgent show. Well, yeah. it, it wasn't the second resurgent show, but it was the second one where we had the kind of um, the commentary team. So it had been your second on commentary, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think it probably was. So I think, like, from, from my perspective, one of the things that I was really excited about when resurgence was set up um, and, and sort of carried on from that initial phase was, like, the amount of women that... Um, that could be on the card and I thought it was super exciting that like you know when you think back to kind of what British wrestling was or the expectations that people have about British wrestling when I speak to people who don't really know very much about British independent wrestling they'll be like oh like big daddy versus giant haystacks it's all like big blokes you know big hairy men and um and so for me like this matchup in fact all three times really but this match at when when it was first announced upon that first card i think it was just like this is an this is great to see like two young women like basically kind of challenging the expectations of what wrestling might be um yeah i know that's quite a lot to put on you guys, your shoulders guys but, um, but i just think it's uh, yeah i remember like the, the just seeing the way those a few, first few cards were coming together just kind of but just very yeah really 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 exciting to see a kind of a shift a change in what we might understand kind of British independent wrestling to be cool um so this is this is kind of a question to both of you but and delving more into that um process of planning the match um you're on you're on second on that show I think the the match went for just over 10 minutes so what what's your kind of like aims when putting together a match like that uh, I think yeah, one. Go. <laughs> go on, what? There you go. Uh, <laughs> I think one of the main things is just making each other look good and making them um, put over what they want, what they want to showcase from themselves. Because I think if if both of you go into a matchup with that type of attitude, you you're both going to come out of the matchup. Um, happy and I think the audience will be happy because they feel that um connection between you both as well yeah I was gonna say like a very similar thing like I think before that we'd only I'd had a four-way at resurgence I believe you'd had a four-way at resurgence so I mm. don't think people had seen a lot of what we could do really um and I think so we, I think we both kind of went into it being like okay like maybe I don't know I I just me having more experience than Kanji at the time, I was like, okay, I need to like, what can I do to make her really like look really good? Cause then hopefully like she can get a platform that can showcase her to other promotions as well. So she can start kind of spreading out. Um, so I think we kind of went in with that. Okay. We'll just make each other look good. And I think we both kind of went in as it was like, it was baby face, baby face. I obviously took the more aggressive role, which I think I do just naturally in general anyway. Um, but yeah, I think we were just both went in wanting to make each other look good. I don't think we were like, let's have the best match on the on the card, blah, blah. Like, I just think somehow, some way, I have no idea why we just meshed really, really well. I think that's really interesting, that idea of like making the other person look good. Like, it's really different from when we, whenever we have these conversations around like what wrestling is, sport, art, art, sport, like what is like, it's one of the things I always come back to is like the making the other person look good is like really different from like that kind of competitive sporting thing like it it and actually very different from kind of competitive theater thing i've worked with enough actors who haven't tried to make other people look good so like i'm really interested in the way that wrestling like encourages you to make the other person look good and in making the other person look good you look you good look too good. like it's more about the other person right yeah i think it's just like if i think it's just the way it's i think i personally think it's the right way to go into into matches and stuff like you get such like a good feeling knowing okay well i made this person look good I sold their moves that made it look 
like horrifying and disgusting and like devastating and stuff like that. And I think like that's such a, I think that's the way it should be. Yeah, I agree. hundred percent. Yeah. I think there's something, um, one of the things I noticed in that match that maybe reflects that is Kanji, your kind of selling of different offense. Like I think you, there's particularly in the submissions and things like that. And you can, you can kind of see looking back on that match, the way that you make, Charlie's particular kind of moves and things like that look extra kind of it's almost like an accent on top of the move or something like that and like I don't know if you if that's something you 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 think of as a strength in your own wrestling um I don't I think I think that's maybe the influence of my trainer with with Sticks being my trainer he's um he's really into his old school type of wrestling where everything in a match means something um and he a lot of the time in training sessions he's he's very focused on um selling things in a certain way and why you should sell things in a certain way at certain parts in a match um so i think one of the things why um i'm so focused and um i recognize that selling is such a huge part in every match is just due to my influence of sticks really charlie you you kind of mentioned um the how how well the match went but but also was there what how how do you kind of um is there a moment in a match where you where you realize ah i can actually i can work with this person really well like is there can you define i guess uh, a mo- moments when things are going well like were you in the, are you in there thinking oh this kanji is really good like i i can do stuff here or does that come out yeah, in i the- think i think ahead. i probably like threw in the deep end a little bit with it looking back on it because i don't think she'd had like many matches outside of <laughs> her school and i kind of was like oh we'll do this and then we'll do this and then we'll do this and then at the start like i'm very like i think at that point i was starting to like kind of come into my own as who i was as a wrestler um because for a long time I was really scared to do like tech wrestling and like from fear of being like, Oh, what if this isn't right? But then I just kind of, at some point I was like, Oh, you know what? If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Like I'm just going to try it. I'm just going to see what happens. And so I did think I was like, I'm pretty sure I was like, Oh, we just won't plan anything at the start, which is probably ter- like horrible of me to do <laughs> to like someone that was like so fresh in, but she like handled it so well. And I think like, especially like at the start part of the match where you're just like rolling around with someone. I think you can feel that kind of like, Oh, okay, we got something here. And it's just like genuinely a fun thing to do. Like I don't like the best matches are where you just come back absolutely buzzing. Cause you've just like enjoyed yourself. Like you just had a good time. And it was like, there was like a, like, I think maybe not so much in like this one, but like, especially like in the other ones, like it was a bit competitive. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm not in like a mean or nasty way, but like in like a, like actual, like friendly, like, okay, let's just like go and see what happens. <laughs> Have you I was been... buzzing after that first one. Claire, any thoughts on that? About? Uh, just on, that. yeah, yeah. On how, how, how true. From yeah, where like you were I, sat I, From where we I think it was, um, yeah, I think it was. It ended up being kind of a real standout match. I think, like going back to what Sam was saying about the lack of no expectations. My expectations were just like, "This is great! How great to have like you know a women's match on the card with given like given lots of time and showcase, and this is really cool." And um, and I think afterwards, I I remember like thinking back now, kind of being being quite a kind of blown away really by it like it had been I think it had kind of um out out outshone itself <laughs> I was like wow okay that was excellent I'm very much looking forward to seeing that again and I think it, in, in essence it was kind of a foundational moment for you guys moving you know and then having the three matches like it suddenly felt like this had um it, it had a lot more behind it than I initially imagined it would have done when I when when we went into the match afterwards I was like ha huh, I I I really want to see that again. I really want to see something else with these two. And I think that for, for me is always a sign of kind of um, excellence. So that something really excellent happened in the ring when I'm like, I want to see more of that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how I felt coming out of it. So. And last, so my last question on this match before we move on to the next one is um, 
a little bit like I think Charlie, you mentioned the kind of buzz of after the match for, for yourself, like how much you enjoyed it. And um, what is it? What does it do in terms of like creating a friendship um, and a relationship with that person? Because you've never met each other. You're going out and you're wrestling for twelve minutes. After, after, is there a kind of sense of trust built between you? Like, how does that work? I think so for sure. Like, I think you just have like an automatic bond with with someone when you do wrestling. Like, it's, it's like it's just it is a weird thing, isn't it? Like to go and put all your trust in somebody that you don't even know. Like, because obviously it's wrestling things happen like we don't want to hurt anyone ever but it's just it's a competitive contact sport it's it's gonna happen unfortunately um and I think like I don't know I just felt this like oh okay we're on the same page here like me and her I think like because like looking at us we're complete like personality wise we're two completely different people like um but like I consider her like one of like my closest friends and I think it is just from that match. Do you know what I mean? Like after I was like, okay, we definitely have something here. Can you, does that, does that kind of resonate with you? Yeah, hundred percent. I think, do you know how you say, um, like when, when you meet someone for the first time, it's almost that first impression that will be that lasting impression. And when I first met, um, Charlie, she was just so casual and calm um just like it's just like we're, we're just meeting at a, a cafe you know um so there, there was no pressure there was no tension at all and one of the things is she didn't say to me because I've had this recently before where it kind of I don't know if it's the same for you Charlie but um it kind of made makes you feel like someone's belittling you before a match if they turn around and say to you what do you do it's like, okay, let's, let's plan. What do you do? And I, I don't know what it is, but it's just <laughs> an awkward question to answer. It's like, <laughs> I can't, I, you, like, where do you even begin to answer that question? Yeah. Like, you didn't ask me that. Have you had it before, <laughs> Charlie? Yeah, you like freak out. You're like, oh my God, I don't know what I do. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's such a weird question. I don't know why people still ask it, but yeah, she didn't ask me that question. It, it was just an instant like, let's work together, let's figure this out. And we had the story there to work on, mm -hmm. which was Charlie, who is this m a lot more experienced than me. And then me who was, you know, just about reaching out into this huge industry. So that's our story we were both, we both knew about and we just put this match together like that together. Can I ask a follow-on question for that, Kanji? Like, what difference does it make in terms of, like, local crowd? I remember that night, like, like the, the, it felt like a local crowd for you. Like, it felt like, you know, your people. Do you know what I mean? Like, does that make a difference to your performance or how you, how you work those sort of matches or, or how you feel about them? Yeah, I think so. I've had um, matches before where you just feel like the audience don't care about you. Um, no matter how hard you try, no matter how smiley and um, intimate you are with that audience, sometimes they, they, they come together and they just feel like you don't, they don't care about you. And it really does affect the way, well, I wrestle. I don't know if it's the same for others, but you kind of just lose, I kind of lose confidence a little bit. Mm. But the fact that the audience was so hot for both of the, both yeah. of them, in that match, I think it just brought out a huge confidence in both of us and just made us work together even more tighter, I think. Yeah, I think um, I'm trying to recall what we, what we said to you in terms of what we wanted from the match. And I think it was on the show as the wrestling match. I think it was go out, go out <laughs> yeah, there and you know, the two of you have, have the wrestling match of the night, which I think is quite interesting. Um, <laughs> um, then so that kind of leads me into the into the second match and um claire kind of alluded to this as well um one of the things that interested me with resurgence and some of the rivalries and the stories that we've done is that they they kind of stem from a match so like when we put together the, the match with the two of you we kanji had already wrestled for us charlie had already wrestled for us so we, we, you know, there, there was a logic there, but there wasn't a, any kind of grand plan that this would end in, you know, some big Iron Woman match or anything like that. But the match itself was the kind of, the match in November was the sort of seed that created the feud. 
and the way it was wrestled, the style, it was very wrestling, wrestling, it was quite sporting in its presentation. Like you said, you were both baby faces, but obviously Charlie was more the aggressor. And that brings an expectation then that you want to kind of recreate that. And that led to the two out of three falls match. So I want to talk in the, in the two, two out of three falls match. Um, what's, what's the plan? How's, how's the planning approach different when, you, when you've got that sort of stipulation? Now there's maybe a little bit more expectation on you, um, particularly with that, with that stipulation that it's going to be a certain type of match. Um, what, what's the kind of mindset going into, into that? Um, maybe Charlie, if you could start. Well, I'd never done, I'd never done one before. And I think, I think it's, it's hard and it's stressful because there's so many ways you can go about it. Um, with like, oh, in what order should we put the falls, et cetera, et cetera. And I remember I drove to, uh, I drove to the show with Flash Morgan Webster and I was asking him uh, for like the ways we should go into it. Cause I had like a few ideas, but like, obviously he's been around the block, he knows what he's doing. So why not use him for some help? Um, I, I was stressed planning it though. I don't know why. Like, I just think cause it's like a different, like I hadn't really done many stipulation matches as well and it's such like a, a wrestling based matches like do you know what I mean like when you think of two out of three falls you're like oh, okay this is just pure wrestling sort of thing like it's not like a no DQ we can use like other things it's just purely wrestling um but like Flash gave us the idea to to have me get disqualified um which gave Kanji the first fall which I thought was really interesting because I hadn't really seen it before um and then that kind of gave me the aggressive role um going into it, especially because like it was hometown for her so i kind of knew that i was coming in as as the heel kanji your your thoughts on that sort of same uh, question yeah I, th I was in the same position i've never done a match like that before um and i think it's 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 a complicated stipulation um i think it, it is literally just how do you structure it and which which route did we want to go down um and i spoke to quite a few people before on how they would do it given the context of the story and the feud we was in well i don't think it was a feud i think it was just generally more of a story um and so many people were coming at me with different routes you could go down um but when charlie came with the you know, the, dis the disqualification at the beginning. I thought that was perfect because it's almost like as soon as we start, let's just set the scene. And then we've got the rest of the match to tell this, tell this story. Um, so I think that it was a really interesting route to go down. Um, but yeah, it, it was stressful, but it was, <laughs> it was so fun at the same time, but just yeah. being able to talk and give each other, you know, bounce off each other's ideas. It was so fun. Um, I think it was more fun than stressful. When it was over, it was like, yeah, for sure. oh, I want to do it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so one of the things we've asked you to do for this, um, for this is to send us a few different matches that you kind of felt influenced you as wrestlers. And Charlie, you sent us a couple of Japanese matches. Um, can you just, just introduce those matches, the, the names of those matches and who was involved? Yeah, the first... Uh, the first one I sent you was Ogawa versus Misawa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, from, I think it was maybe All Japan instead of Noah. Um, and I just, I adore Ogawa. I think he, if you, if like, just technically, he's one of the most incredible wrestlers I've ever seen. The way he works body parts are just amazing. Like, we just watch him all day. And it's not just the same body part over and over again, like, every match will target a different area. And I think it's really, really interesting. Like a lot of the times if I'm like, oh, I want to work a leg in this match, I'll go, I'll go and watch him. Um, and then the other one was Mako Satomura versus Akira Hikoto. And, oh, this is so sick. It's so brutal. <laughs> um, it's from like the early 2000s. Um, and I think looking back on it now, I think that, the way that match kind of plans out is very story-wise is very similar to the two out of three falls because 
uh, Satamora was obviously very early on in her career and they really used it as like a sort of like, uh, like experience, like they, they played on the experience factor there. Mm. Um, and I think that's kind of how we went in with the Kanji, like the, with the two out of three falls match with Kanji. Cause obviously I had two or three years on her at this point and you can like, I think the first fall I got was me like countering one of her moves because I kind of had like watched it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So I think I used like the structuring of that match in this one. Is um so with with something like the two out of three falls, like um it's sort of synonymous with with longer matches. It was used in the NWA a lot for big championship matches. Having that stipulation, there's then that and, and knowing that you're probably going to go 20 minutes, 25 minutes, does that then give you the license to, to draw on more influences from particularly Japan and Japanese wrestling? Because obviously they normally take a longer, a longer form than yeah. matches. Yeah, for sure. I think, I think it's like a slow build, especially uh, like early 2000s, late 90s Japanese stuff, because they had the time and people people had like the attention span to watch it. Do you know what I mean? They were got so invested in it. Um, so I think like, I think we probably got given probably half an hour for the whole thing, like entrance and exits and stuff like that. Um, and that is a lot of time when you like look at it cause you're like, Oh my gosh, like trying to fill 20, 25 minutes is, is really hard. Um, especially when like Kanji was newer. So she doesn't have like, a bunch of moves do you know what I mean and we also wanted to play on the fact that we could start countering each other's stuff um but yeah I think longer matches are stressful but they're more fun because you have breathing room and you have that time to get people involved and invested in it because you can you can just tear away at a body part and like use those those times of fire from the baby face and like the comeback and like really really build that and the end stretch of a match can be so much more important because you have people understand that you've already been wrestling for 20 minutes and I think they sympathize with that so it's I, I don't know I, I prefer watching longer longer stuff. Angie your, your, your thoughts on that and um, the, maybe the Japanese influence is that an, an influence that resonates with you as well? Um, I think uh, in the beginning of me coming um into the british um the british independent scene i didn't realize how big of a wrestling scene um was happening in japan i'd never really um delve into it at all uh i think maybe it was a bit ignorant of me to to be in that position um but i think when looking back when, when I'm watching uh, past matches like that, especially with Evie, I see her influence 100%. Even the way she wrestles, the way like it feels to wrestle her, it, it feels like that's how it would feel if you was to wrestle in Japan with these, with these strong women out there. Um, so I think it is, she's definitely got a strong influence there. Uh, I feel it. <laughs> she, uh, <laughs> I have to feel it. She's... Everything she does is very, it's, um, it's very tight and just strong. So you, you feel, um, I, I, I trust a hundred percent. Every, everything she does, I trust her. And, um, I don't feel like she's going to hurt me or anything like that by accident or purposely at all. Um, it's a hundred percent trust. And I, I feel confident when I'm, when I'm in the ring with her a hundred percent. I'm interested in the idea of feeling like when you say I can feel it like because when I watched that Satomura match and like when I compared it to there's an amazing documentary uh, by Kim Long Junotto about called Gaya Girls which is based on like Satomura and um, oh, and it's horrendous <laughs> it's horrendous I mean really horrendous and when you look at it like you know she's drawing blood and it's just brutal 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 and so kanji when you say you feel it um <laughs> i'm like oh do you oh wow okay um, so, um is that like because for me as like a non-wrestler but as a wrestling fan and and scholar I, i'm like man that looks 
really painful. So I wonder if you could talk a little bit more about like the feeling of that. Like, is that, is that like painful? Is that because it's like tight or muscular or pain or what, what is that? Well, I watched the Satomura match that uh, Charlie's talking about and I messaged her straight away. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, are you, are you serious? That is absolutely brutal. Um, there were so many moments in that match when watching it that I thought, I thought Miko was dead. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. It was terrifying. And it's not even just like the neck bumps or, or her landing on her head. It's the slaps as well. Yeah. Throughout the whole match, the slaps to the ear. And it was, oh my gosh, I, I was horrified as well. Um, <laughs> but I think when, when I talk about feel, I mean, um, she... Everything, everything I'd say Charlie does, it means something, but it's controlled at the same time. And you feel that it means something. So instead of having some, say, for instance, a headlock, something as simple as a headlock, you feel it. it's nice and tight and it's secure. Whereas if you was to have a headlock and it's so loose and you just feel that like you can step out of it, um, it, I think sometimes it's it's really hard when you're in such a zone that you want to feel like you're competing. It's hard to keep yourself in that zone. But when you're wrestling someone who, you know, wants to feel like they're competing um, as well as put on a show for an audience, it just come. you're able to almost have a different feel and put on a different different show. Um, Charlie, what is it, uh, sort of flipping that on its head a little bit, one of the things, um, I, I mentioned this earlier actually, is I've noticed Kanji when she's in a hold is uh, always always kind of moving, always uh, trying to kind of get out of the hold, like she's not, she doesn't just sit there and let that hold sit. So as, as the person applying different holds and manoeuvres, is that, what's, what's the feeling of that like? Because um, we've heard it from Kanji's perspective. But what's it like from the perspective of the person applying the hold? I think it's fantastic, especially like Kanji, especially in those like first two matches, she was so new. And the fact that she, like, if people just sit there, like, what's the point? You're meant to be in a fight, aren't you? Like, you don't want to be in a headlock. You don't want to be in a wrist lock. You want to get out of it, it hurts you. Like, so I think like, especially with like her being so new and like moving and like constantly, like, I like when people like, it's fun if you, if you work for something, do you know what I mean? Like it's still in a controlled environment and you're being safe and you're like protecting each other, but you're still, I'm not just going to give you my arm because it's mine and I don't want you to break it. And I don't want to lose the match because the point is to win. So I think if you look like you're trying to fight, you look like you're trying to get out of something that is painful. Like the audience resonates with them because they're like, Oh no, she really doesn't want to be in that. Like every time, like, I don't know, looking back, like I'd have like, like I'd snatch the arm bar or something with, uh, with Kanji or even with like Jean, it'd be like trying to get to the rope straight away because they know that that's the end if, if it's in for too long. So, yeah. It's really, really interesting. That actually. Um, some really good points. Um, Claire, is there anything you want to pick up in there? Um, no, I think that's probably probably covered it all. Apart from, I think like um, again, like for me, that match, the kind of having a two out of three falls match, I hadn't heard of one. Again, coming back to my kind of point about like promoting women wrestlers and and just the excitement of that. Um, and, and getting to the point where it's just talking about wrestlers as opposed to like, this is the women's match on the card. Like, and, and for me, that that was one of the moments where it kind of blew that apart, where it was just like, this was just an amazing wrestling match. Like I didn't have to talk about like it being a great win, you know, brilliant for women. Like I didn't have to talk about any of that anymore. Cause I was just like, this is an amazing wrestling match. And we don't have to, and actually the gender didn't really matter. Like it was, so for me, it was quite a, an important match because it made it I think and hopefully for people in the audience as well because it was just like this is wrestling like these yeah. are great wrestlers that's it and I found that quite an exciting exciting moment I guess I think that's the way I really like wrestling being viewed like I don't want to be a female wrestler 
yeah right or i don't want to be in a women's match you know what i mean i just want to be a wrestler and i think yep. like it was cool because i think we were both really like kind of like felt some sense of pressure going into mm. it because they're like oh it's the follow-up to the first one that everyone really seemed to like and i think even walking out um i didn't know but like sticks was on commentary yeah so that's like that's Kanji's teacher watching. So that's, a, that's a level of pressure. And then we get out and in the venue we're at, it has the, like the higher level. And we will, looked up and like the whole roster were watching and I was like, Oh no, <laughs> like that's just <laughs> extra, extra layers. But I think that that was really fun. Like, cause it makes you perform as, as best as you can. And I think like going into that match, I don't think I was, emotionally in the best place I've ever been like I think I was going through some stuff but I think I kind of just like let myself go in that match do you know what I mean like I kind of just poured my heart and soul into it like I had nothing to lose sort of thing yeah just before we move on to the next match I just want to pick up on that um that sort of re the reception of the match in particular because obviously the first match created a few waves within resurgence and amongst kind of fans and things like that but I think the second match was really the breakthrough one. And like you said, I, because I was up, on, I, I'm on the balcony at those Nottingham shows. And it was almost the whole roster was, sat, yeah, was, was watching packed. it. And um, particularly people like there was Fla Flash Morgan Webster, whose name's come up earlier. He was just, he, he was almost jumping up and down, I think, at one point at the end. And then, yeah, like you say, Sticks was on commentary. And also, um, I remember Daryl Allen um, was sent the match. I think or he was sent a different match from that show and ended up watching your match and then gave it a shout out. What does that reception mean? Because obviously the fan reception is good at one point, but what does the kind of reception of your kind of peers mean to you? And how do you kind of um, deal with that and that sort of thing? I think it's so cool. Like I remember um, Daryl Allen, like messaged me after it and I was like, he's just saying that he watched it, he really enjoyed it. And I was like, oh, like, can you give me any feedback? And like, the stuff that he said was like so cool and like to know that people actually like cared enough to especially like if they're on the show like it's stressful backstage you know what I mean like people had other matches to plan and stuff to worry about but like it was really cool to like look up there and be like oh people genuinely care to watch um so I think that's <laughs> it's stressful but it's cool <laughs> and um Kanji what was it like particularly with sticks being there as well uh, yeah, like Charlie said, it was added pressure. But I think for me, especially with Sticks being on commentary, it was just um, an opportunity to show him what he's taught me and what I can do on this big stage in this big match against someone like Charlie. Um, it was a big opportunity. And yeah, coming backstage to see, you know, everyone everyone who's rushed back because we when when we came backstage we seen um a lot of the talent who was on the show and who was watching um running through because they've just been watching so to see that we we could see them all running running backstage after watching our match like, that was a huge achievement um to know you know it was almost like a privilege to see and to know that you know they're taking the time to watch this match um, they don't have to, so it's it's a huge respectful moment. Um, and to say that we worked for this match, like I don't think this match wasn't really in your plans for resurgence, was it? It was the yeah, first I don't even match think it was originally meant to happen. Yeah. Yeah. No. Originally, the plan was. Um, it was like was me and Drew, I think. Yeah, I think there was something with you and Drew, and I think Kanji was going to wrestle Charlie Morgan, and I think yeah. Drew. Drew had to pull out because he went. He obviously went to Japan, and then I think from that point it was a very obvious. Ah, oh, well, obviously we're doing Kanji. Yeah, we need to. Yes. <laughs> um, I don't think it was a, a, a clear cut even before we went down that route. I think it was always kind of on the cards, but for some reason it probably it's probably my fault. I generally get all these things wrong, <laughs> and someone else comes along, comes up with a better idea. <laughs> but then I, I remember afterwards the difference was yeah so we're doing iron i think the next day i think i messaged yeah. um, charlie and yeah. said so we're doing iron woman then <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, it was really cool like i remember walking backstage and like sticks like shook my hand and was like that was really good and like i think that's so cool because i think getting that like seal of approval from your trainer is like the coolest feeling ever like i remember when i wrestled madison eagles for the first time 
and like shaking her hand after it and I was like oh like this is the coolest moment because like they kind of made you do you know what I mean like if it wasn't for them you'd be nothing all right so let's move on now and the, the feet that we'll pick up on this theme uh, for this next match so the final match was the Art House Wrestling Volume 3 August 2018 and this was the Iron Woman main event um, of that show and I want to start by asking Claire if you could just sort of set the scene a little bit of that kind of day and the build-up to that and your expectations going in. Yeah, sure. So um, after the first two matches, I think like expectations, I don't know if you guys felt it, but they were really high. <laughs> like, um, And I, I, I'm still to this day, I don't think I've ever been more excited about a resurgence match going in. Like just um, there was some, there was just something in the air that like, and the whole, it, I think it was, for me, it was the moment where resurgence kind of came to get, everything just was perfect. Like the crowd were perfect we felt good in commentary like you guys were absolutely just blew the place apart like it was just a kind of perfect moment and I think um yeah leading up to it um I think I was just like just genuinely excited to see what would happen um and and I and just yeah like there was so it felt to me like there was so much hype about it and um and I think I was kind of looking around like social media and things like that and thinking wow this is like making waves well outside of kind of normal resurgence connected places like where they were like oh yeah resurgence match great but actually this was like making waves way beyond that and um and it, yeah so I was I was extremely excited in the lead up to this like I, and I genuinely don't think I've I've ever been excited before or since about a resurgence match. Like this was the, like yeah, this was this was this is to me is the high point of resurgence so far. Mm. Even though there've been some amazing points at various points, but like this was the moment going in where I had that like heart flutter thing, which sometimes you get when you watch wrestling and you're like, oh, I feel like I'm my whole body is like kind of on edge for this match in some way, and that's like, that's definitely how I felt leading into it. Awesome, um, yeah. So. I think actually the, one of the things that helped it was that there was quite a long build thinking back mm. because Kanji, you got injured, I think at some point, didn't you? Was it before, was it just after the, the two out of three falls match? I think so. Yeah. I injured my knee, I think. Mm. Yeah. And then there was the April show where I don't think anyone expected you to be there. And Charlie wrestled Roma, I think. Yeah. And then you came out and oh no, oh, Charlie, yeah. Charlie issued the challenge and you talk us oh, through. Yeah. I broke my hand, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> You're the walls, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was cool. Like, um, I think even when I just said, like, when I called you out, like, I don't know what people expected, but I think there had been some like tweets like circulating and being like, oh, they should do like the third one. It should be an Iron Woman or it should be like yeah. some sort of stipulation. So I think people obviously wanted to see a follow up to it because I think we had made it known at that point that, that we were two two I believe. Yeah. Yeah. That, actually, um, at that point, is it worth mentioning what what were the other? Because you had other matches in other companies, didn't you? Around that time. Yeah, I think we had another one at Eve, or we did like some sort of like big multi woman tag. We had at Eve as well. Yeah, and we had the South Side show as well. Didn't we? Yeah, we had a Southside singles. We had an Eve singles. So I think like it was just like people were starting to like be like, oh, they have really good matches together. Let's like jump on this, which I'm like totally up for because I'm like, <laughs> yes, she's like, I love wrestling you. Um, and then so yeah, I think we were, I think we actually were even like, even in other companies, like it just ended up being like we were like tied with like wins loss, which is cool. Um, but I think like just a reaction like when I said Iron Woman on that show after the match with Romo like <laughs> it was kind of like just a buzz in the room I was like oh yeah we got something here <laughs> yeah and then I think there was a surprise Kanji came out and uh, accepted yeah. the challenge in, in classics uh, Kanji mic time I think you just said yeah, yeah, it's on. <laughs> 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 one word, done. <laughs> That's all you need. Yeah, it was. There was one word, wasn't it? It was just yeah. done. Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. So then, back into this match, and just picking up on some of the things that Claire said before we delve into it, I want to. What I noticed 
watching this back and watching the November back match back was how much resurgence had kind of changed at that point. Like it was the November one was obviously at the same venue, Attenborough Arts Centre, but just the things like the visuals, um, the space looked so much better for the Iron Woman match. The um, the commentary I thought was you know you and Joe, Claire and Joe had kind of started to find their their connection as commentators, and Joe sets up the re- the match really nicely on commentary. Um, so then if we delve into the match, this time you know it's going to be 30 minutes. It has to go 30 minutes. So just uh, maybe starting with Charlie, can you just talk us through the planning process? Like, did it start a lot earlier than other matches? What, how did you go um, about it? I think we both decided we were going to get there a little bit earlier. Um, I don't think that helped us at all uh, because I don't think we started really, like, planning until the show started, eh? Like, I think for a long time we were just sitting there and we just both had no idea how to tackle this because it's different to stipulations. Like you have to go for, for 30 minutes, like no matter what, like, so it's so hard trying to put content into a 30 minute time period because you could just be nervous and go really fast and it could be over in 15 minutes. Um, so I think for so long we were like, oh, and also like how are we going to like structure the falls and stuff like that? Because we could just go straight at the start or we could, we ended up waiting to the end, which I really liked. I thought that was cool because it built so much tension. Um, but I think we sat there for like a good hour being like, I, like, I don't know where to start with this. <laughs> but it all came together. <laughs> um, yeah. Kanji, your thoughts on that? uh yeah it yeah we did we did get there early we said oh let's get there a few hours before um obviously the call and then we got into the space and we seen um you had the big projector of the timer up and it just made everything seem so real like we were together like oh my god what are we doing what what It was so nerve wracking, wasn't it? We just we just yeah. couldn't stop talking about this timer that we could see. Yeah. I mean, I was I was shitting myself about the timer because I I was like, <laughs> if this if this doesn't work, the whole match is you know off to the worst possible start. <laughs> I think I must have tested that timer about twenty times that day. Yeah, we knew. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, gosh, half an hour is quite long, isn't it? Yeah. Like even it's just pressure on yourself too because you have to like your cardio has to be able to go for for that long, especially when you are getting towards the end, but the end is like the climax of the match. So you're going a hundred miles an hour. So you need to be as fresh as you were. Uh, even if you're like selling and stuff like that, you still need to, to have that in the gas tank right towards the end. And that is, I think when you think, like think about that, you're like, Oh my God. And that just adds other layers that you like don't normally have in a match. What's um so, as as time is as, as it's getting closer and closer to the match and and you're going out and resting it, does how does the kind of detail start to to come in? Does it um, just before the match? Do you run? Did you have a, a, a run through of everything? Did you just have say certain elements pinned down and then there was room for for improvisation or how did how did that kind of work? Um, we we kind of went into it with like, okay, well the the first 10 minutes we can kind of uh, just wrestle um, and then kind of like test each other out there. And we had like one little thing that led into the next, uh, the next thing, but we kind of did have time cues that we were kind of going off. We're like, okay, at like 10 minutes we'll do this and at 15 minutes we'll do this. And then hopefully like it, it ended up working out, honestly, like the timing of it couldn't have been, more perfect which I was like so happy about um but I think like when we were planning it it was just like the end like the end bit that we were kind of we changed it a few different times um Lycos really helped us as well um because I think he puts matches together so so fantastically especially like back ends of matches um so we got him to help put it together like we like ended up going getting like a room by ourselves like just so we could like focus um but honestly like the timing of it couldn't have been better if we tried Kanji your your kind of perspective on that 
Yeah, I agree. I was so surprised um, after the end, after reflecting on the whole match. I was so surprised how how well we was able to just um, put on the whole match with the timings on there. Because that was one of our, the biggest things we were worried about. We weren't worried about anything else. Uh, we weren't worried about, you know, the story we had to tell or the moves we had to take or anything. And we had some risky stuff there as well that, you know, we, we, we wanted to pull off. And that wasn't the worry at all. It was literally just, we have to be on time. Um, and we made sure, you know, with the referee we had, Tony, we made sure he was aware of um, to to make a, to keep giving us those those time cues so we could, instead of us just constantly looking at the timer and kind of breaking the illusion, um, even though we, we wanted, you know, the audience to see that we're watching the time, um, we wanted to stay almost um, in this, this competing role that, you know, every second counts. It wasn't just looking, okay, 10 minutes, go. Um, so we even had the referee referee on us to um, help us keep on track of everything. But yeah, I was amazed how, how well it turned out time-wise. Yeah. <laughs> I think just having those like timestamps where we were like, okay, at this, at this time, we're good to go. At this time, we're going to go to this. Like, even if we weren't up to that or like, we can like improvise. Like I'm, I'm sure that like my heat on Kanji went a little bit longer yeah. or like I could just keep putting heat on her until I was like, okay, at 18 minutes, we're going to do such and such. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, like I was stoked at the time. <laughs> That's fa fascinating stuff. I think one of the, one of the pieces of someone on one of the social media, different, different social media channels said something which really stuck with me, which was that it, it was 30 minutes, which felt like watching 10 minutes. And I think that, that really, I think even Claire, I think you and Joe picked it up on commentary when yeah. I think the 15 minute mark or 20 minute mark had reached and you were like, Oh, can't believe that's gone. Yeah. That's yeah. No, it all just zoomed cool past. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's like the, the goal with it really, isn't it? Like, especially with like Iron, Iron Man and Iron Woman matches, like, keeping someone's attention span for, for 30 minutes is a hard thing to do. And like, sometimes like if I see a match of 30 minutes, like, I was like, Oh my gosh, like that's a, that's a chunk of your day, you know, like <laughs> that's a long time to be focused on something and, and like keep people invested in something. Cause like one wrong thing and they they get taken out of it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that that tweet was so cool. I was like, that was, that's, that's great. Um, before I want to I'll talk towards the end about the end of the match in a minute, but just at this point, I want to bring in the, the match that Kanji selected for us to watch the HBK Kurt Angle match from WrestleMania. Um, and I think not beside it being just a really amazing match and HBK being kind of at the peak of his powers. Um, I wondered what, what it had um, some, something around like expectation, like, how much is there a pressure to live up to an expectation of that stage? And obviously it's so much different at this point to when you first wrestled each other in November. Like how much does that kind of factor into the planning of the match? Do you, do you feel pressure to have elements that are going to surpass the previous matches and things like that? And it being the main event as well, because this was the first time that it had been, the match had been staged as the main event. Um, I think for me, especially when it's especially when it's a huge match for both wrestlers um, and there's, there's such a strong story beforehand. I think the one, the one of the huge aspects of a wrestling match that makes each match special and unique to those certain in particular wrestlers is the moments in particular moments you make and you create in that match. Um, so when, when watching the Iron Woman back, one of the huge things that sticks out to me today, like every time I think of the Iron Woman match, the one moment that is so strong for me is um, when um, Charlie hits me with um, her finish on the ramp, at the top of the ramp. And then the referee is counted to like seven and she's, she's hit it. And she just sits there with her head down like, or 
she, she's she got all these thoughts going in her head almost thinking like should I have done that or I can't believe it's it's come to this and then you see her reach back to almost check to see if I'm okay and then she still sits there with her head down and then she looks up at the referee and the referee's like counting to nine <laughs> and then you see her just like almost like it's it's so hard to just drag herself up and drag herself into the ring to you know get that fall um it's like that moment it's it's just it's as part of the whole match it's such a small moment but it's that moment for me that exists throughout the entirety of the match Mm -hmm. just just that little aspect of that match that she made you know and it was moment that wasn't planned that's all just her feelings you know what I mean Mm -hmm. and I think it's beautiful moments like that in a match that are the things that make that match um, special and um, overtakes that expectation that people had in the beginning. Yeah, Evie, uh, um, Charlie, can we get your, get your thoughts on <laughs> Oh my God. Can, can she did it first, um, but yeah. I know she did. <laughs> yeah. No, sorry. Secrets out. Have an actual name. Yeah. Um, I think kayfabe's well and truly been broken at this point. I mean, yeah, we're literally talking about putting it together. That was so nice. What Candy just said. Oh my god. I think, like, coming into that match, it was. I think we were both such different wrestlers than we were from the first one. Like it was almost like a year on. Um, I think I had just got back from Japan, my first Mm -hmm. tour. And I think that I hadn't really truly found myself as a wrestler yet, but the, the start at like the hints of it were, were there. And I I came up, like I felt so much more confident as a wrestler coming into that. Um, Just from, from all the matches I had in Japan where, you know, it's just a completely different style. I was out of my comfort zone. Um, And I think we also, it's so hard to put a match on that isn't repeating the same things over and over again, because we'd had the two out of three falls, which I'm pretty sure was close to a half an hour match anyway, probably like 25 minutes unintentionally. Um, But it's hard to not be like, oh, let's do what we did in this one because people have seen it. Mm -hmm. And I think you know, we both came in with some different things, like some new moves and stuff like that. But trying to keep people invested in something that was very similar to what they had seen before um, was different. But I don't know, I, I just think we both had something to prove sort of thing in it because there was there was expectation, there was hype. And also just for some reason, like on that day, there was also New Japan show, and I'm pretty sure like yeah. NXT had a takeover and to know that we still sold that out was like, so, yeah. I so remember special. People, people saying that they'd, I remember like there were quite a lot of tweets saying, Oh, actually we've, we've, we've resold our tickets for the, the yeah. NXT show. Cause we yeah. want to be at resurgence. We were like, what now? So <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> uh, that, yeah, yeah, it was like, awesome. For people to like all wrestling's great and and everyone has different tastes yeah. and and likes and that's the the beauty of it but i think you know in my head like these people like they're superstars and the mm-hmm. fact that people want to see like see us like mm-hmm. is is really cool because it's i think it's important there was like an all-female main event mm-hmm. and that you know five six seven years ago that wouldn't have been a thing do you know what i mean yeah I think we we made something special without even wrestling. I want to pick up on um, following on from what Kanji said about the the spot on the outside. There's kind of um, two other moments in the match which I thought were really interesting. Um, And I want to also get Claire's thoughts on this. Um, The the first one is the when you both do the bridges from the floor. um, I think you've got... um, uh, it's like a Greco-Roman sort of knuckle lock, I think. And then you're both on, my wrestling knowledge isn't particularly good, hold for hold. You're both on the mat and you both bridge and then you shake hands. Mm-hmm. Is that, do you remember that point? Um, yeah, and then 
and which was you know symbolic of the the rivalry and the sportsmanship and then you started slapping each other it was also like so in a way that 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 moment was a kind of microcosm of the whole feud it was like yeah, yeah. we respect each other there's this sporting element but also like we're fiercely competitive and, yeah. and we're not afraid to it was cool because we got like kanji through the first slap as well which was i think people hadn't really seen that side of her yet um and i think that was like a special moment too because it was like okay no no no, the the gears are changing now and um this isn't just a like a fun little wrestle like this this really means something to both of us and like especially kanji being like the underdog of it and i think like her setting that moment was was really cool um, yeah, Claire, what, what are your thoughts on that? Because I think this, this is a conversation we've had a few times about um, micro and macro kind of storytelling yeah. and wrestling. Yeah, I think like for me it was, um, so actually it links back with the Kurt Angle HBK match because um, while I was watching that, I was thinking about like it being kind of wrestling versus wrestling. Like they're really different styles, but this is ultimately about like who is the best. And for me, that's what that was about. Like it was a kind of microcosm of like, right, we we respect one another and actually the the re the whole match comes out of that respect it's like we respect each other and we want to prove who the best is and i love those sort of storylines because it's it, it's just two people really going for it and really like trying the hardest i think that they always work really really well so i can kind of see the mirror of the two different um between the kind of angle which became between the iron one match you can see that kind of that kind of mirroring of uh, different stages, yes, but like the mirroring that being kind of like here are two wrestlers at the like the top of what they're doing and they just wanna they just wanna go out there and have a match to prove who the best is. Like and, and for me that's what that moment was all about as well. Cool. Yeah, mirroring was in there was another match that um that Charlie sent us to watch, which was Alex Shelley and Chris Saban. And there was some that was one of the things that jumped out at me in that match actually, because obviously they're tag team wrestlers mm -hmm. tag team partners but there's a lot of mirroring in that match between the two of them um mm -hmm. in in the kind of counter counter holds and things like that um i wondered evie um charlie if you could just sort of talk about that match a little bit <laughs> yeah i um, think that is probably one of my favorite matches that i've ever ever watched like i'll always if people ask me what my favorite matches it's shelly versus saban and i think um I think because I started wrestling as a tag team wrestler and I've always had such love for tag team wrestling. Like obviously it's come full circle now because I'm back doing tag stuff with, um, with Millie now. And I, I think it's such a cool thing. Cause it's such a different dynamic. Like when you wrestle someone that, you know, like even like to the point where you know, like what they're thinking, what they're feeling like inside their head, I think it's a completely different thing. And I think, uh, Kanji and I got to the point where people were like, okay, they, they know each other now. Mm. And I think when you have uh, like that level with someone and the audience are aware of it as well, like that's when you can start countering stuff. And I think it just gets more interesting and, and um, just like a whole different way you can like start to plan things and start to go about things. I think it's really cool. Mm. Yeah. Does that, I'm interested in, in that and how just, when you when you do feel comfortable um, to include so much counter wrestling in a match, does that then change how you kind of structure the match? Because I always when I see matches like that that contain so much counter wrestling, I, it always really um, kind of blows my mind how that match is put together. Is it just something that comes through familiarity? I think so. Like I, I, I think it has its time and place as well because, you know, if we had that first match together and we were just countering each other's moves, like it's just silly, isn't it? Like, of course we can probably count each other's moves, but I've never wrestled her before. So how do I, how do I know what she does and how do I know when she's going to do it? But I think when you get like the audience so involved in stuff like that, it's just special because they're like, Oh, she's hooking up for a finish. But then like, you, like you never know what's going to happen. I think you can keep them on, on like the edge of their seat sort of thing there. I think it's really special. Angie, your, your kind of thoughts on that? Um, yeah, I think, if you was to do it in your first match, it just doesn't, wouldn't make sense. Um, and I think you're just wasting, it's almost like you are wasting an opportunity because the audience wouldn't be in the same position as you. They wouldn't understand it. 
Um, whereas if you was to leave it to a later stage, if, you know, these matches were to come up in, say, for instance, our storyline, um, the the impact counter wrestling would have on an audience, it would be so huge. Whereas if you did it in the beginning, you've you've built up nothing really. So mm. I think it is when when you're planning something like that, you do just have to take in consideration how the audience takes it on and what their perspective of the match is. Yeah, I think um, it, it's one of the great things about wrestling rivalries, isn't it? That you can, for the for the highly engaged fan, that they can watch that, those series of matches and see how they change and evolve over time and their appreciation and their understanding of the matches changes based on those previous matches. So like, um, one, think, yeah, yeah. I, I was going to say, like, I think we like the, the Saban and Shelley one, like they've counted each other, they've counted each other, they know what they're doing and then like, you know, they have to go and be cheeky and like get the sly win because they've run out of everything else. Yeah, I love the finish of that one. Actually, yeah, it's cool. Um, yeah, I, I think in the in the UK indies as well, uh, um, Pete Dunne, Mark Andrews is a really good example of a, of counter wrestling matches. I think I've, I saw one of their matches live, and it is just because they've wrestled each other so many times. It's just counter within counter within counter, and I guess it. it for, for you guys, is it a way that you can keep keep everything fresh and it's a way that you can develop your rivalry, you know, into the future? Yeah, for sure. Like, I remember I was thinking, like, leading up to the match, I'm like, oh, if she does this, how can I, how can I change it into mine and, like, vice versa? And I think, like, there's probably more things that we haven't even explored yet. Um, and there's, like, little, like, playbacks we can have now, you know, like, we can, like, re like reference Oh, okay, well, in the I'm on when we did this, but the next time we wrestle, maybe we like go to do this and like it will kind of give the audience like a little throwback to that. Like, I think we, I did it in the match with, with Jean when I like, um, I was stepping on him, I was stepping on him, I was stepping on him, and the ref comes to me, he's like, I'm going to disqualify you. And I kind of like have that throwback to the two out of three falls where I did get disqualified and I kind of need to, need to keep my head cool. And I think like, I don't know if people picked up on it, but I know a few people did. And like tweeted about it and I was like, oh, that, like, that's the coolest thing when you make people remember and stuff, you know, like you obviously left like an impression on them. And that's nice. Uh, Claire, I imagine you've got a few thoughts on that. That's a bit of uh, intertextuality there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Like I think, so uh, for me, it's like, um, it, it really, you, you get really valued as a, as a proper fan. Like I put those things in the inverted commas, but you know what I mean? Like, because you're really invested in it. So you start to kind of see resonances all over the place. And there's, there's a kind of, a, there's a joy taken in the same way as the joy taken, like the similarities with like comic books is quite strong here. I think like the sense that, um, you know, if you, if you're a Marvel fan and, and you, and you even watch the, the films, like the, the joy is seeing the way that they seg together, like seeing the kind of passing of them. Um, and I think the same comes with wrestling. Like there are moments where I'm watching a wrestling match where I'm like, oh, that totally takes me back to this. Mo like, and I think if you have a real encyclopedic knowledge of wrestling, like a lot of people do, I do not, but a lot of people have this massive encyclopedic knowledge of wrestling. Like the joy taken and them going, well, you know, in 1992, this happened like now, like, and you're thinking, wow, like that's an amazing, so I think, um, yeah, there's a, there's a real, you can come to, you could, you could come to the Iron Woman match fresh and just be like, this is a cool match and I've really enjoyed it. Uh, but I think there's, there's a greater joy to be experienced when you come to it, having seen the previous matches, having some understanding of the way that rivalries function. Um, and, um, and like th that, that bit that Sam brought up about kind of the first slap, like understanding what kind of that slap means in wrestling parlance brings a greater sense of joy to that moment where I'm like, oh, whoa, and it's Kanji that goes first. What does that mean? Like, yeah, I think we, we talked a little bit um, throughout the day really about um, different like little moments being kind of symbolic of like a greater, a great, a bigger moment. And for me, it's, it's the way those little moments kind of act intertextually with a whole range of other little moments where I'm like, I totally understand this because I've seen this, 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 and this, which is all making sense mm. to me. Obviously our brains don't work that quickly, but, uh, but it's, it's happening in our brain whether we, whether we appreciate it or not. Yeah, I think mm. it does like come naturally as well. Like there was one point in the Iron Woman, uh, it's like one of my favorite parts where I do the, 
the Yakuza, like the seated Yakuza in the corner to Kanji. And then I just like stamp on her head and it looks freaking disgusting. It looks brutal. And then like it was like a little bit of a throwback to the to that three falls where I kind of need to compose myself and I go and I sit on the other turnbuckle and I'm like okay you need to you need to keep level headed here otherwise it's it's gonna like play to your disadvantage mm. and I think it's cool when that stuff like that wasn't planned like that just came like naturally and I think it is cool when you can when wrestling isn't just about moves it's more about emotion and feeling and yeah I think that's really cool yeah, it's all really fascinating stuff. Um, I want to bring the discussion to close, unfortunately, because this has been really enjoyable. But I want to talk a little bit about the ending of the Iron Woman match now. So the last, those last kind of five minutes. Um, Kanji, in particular, um, you didn't have the most enjoyable ending. Can you talk us through <laughs> what happened with your injury and things like that? Um. Yeah, when I hit the, when I got my, was it my second fall? I think. Yeah, like the slice of heaven kick from the, yeah. the top. Um, I don't know what happened. I think I just, I think I over rotated, but I landed um, very silly of me. I put my hands down to protect my fall. And uh, I I think I just hyper extended my elbow. Um, and straight away it was just crazy pain in my elbow so I dragged myself over to, for the pin um and I said to Charlie I've hurt myself but I don't think she heard me because I, I didn't hear her <laughs> no um but I got the thought and I sat up and I just held my elbow just thinking I can I just I, I can get through this just get through it um and then I said to the ref I said, I've hurt my elbow. And I don't think he heard me. <laughs> so he just gave me a time cue. So I was like, oh, I, saw you, I saw you help like holding it. And that's when I kind of like clicked it. And I was like, oh, because I clicked it because I was like, oh, I've been working your other arm. Yeah. I'm like, why are you holding? I'm like, oh no. <laughs> oh no. I couldn't believe it. But at that point I had to, um, I, I just got that fall and the audience were on top and then I lied after telling the ref um, I got no response I lied next to Charlie and I told her again I've, <laughs> I've hurt my elbow and she says take a slow climb up the rope take a slow climb up the corner so I was like thank you <laughs> um, so I took a slow climb and it was so hard like because I couldn't use the arm I'd hurt. I, I couldn't use it. I couldn't put myself up. And watching it back now, I can see the struggle I had. Um, and I remember in the moment I was climbing up and um, I got onto the second rope and I was thinking, I might just do it from here because I don't think I can get to the top. Um, but the audience were coming up so much. So I thought, right, I'm just going to do it, get to the top. And once I reached the top, I just like, I was just squatted on the top before I stood up to do the big jump. Um, and I just, <laughs> I remember in my head, just looking up saying, um, please help me because I just didn't want to hurt myself even more. Mm. Um, so I, I just had that moment just to gather myself. And then I did the big jump uh, and it was fine. I didn't, it, it wasn't hurting anymore or it weren't hurting any less. Um, I kind of just really forgot because as soon as I missed, um, Charlie had had me for the, for the knees to the face. So I was distracted. I wasn't feeling anything. Um, and then she put me straight into the arm bar, um, but, which was nice because after the knees, what I was, um, what I noticed is she gave me quite a few knees and the last one she stopped. And she almost like had a moment, um, which I thought was amazing. It was lovely to see and, and to experience. And then she snatched the arm bar on, which was on the opposite arm, which I was so, oh, like, <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't even imagine. I love that. Like, it's always the moonsault too. They were always like, you're always a bit like, oh no, we shouldn't put it in. And like, we even like had a discussion like before the match, we're like, should we put the moonsault in? Cause like, oh, we're like, yeah, we'll do it. <laughs> Yeah, we'll just stick it in there, put it in there. Um, 
but I wanted it's just like with the with the angle and HBK match at the end the way uh, Michael's held on for so long and mm-hmm. you can mm-hmm. see in his face he's 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 dying to get out of it but he's he's fighting so hard because you know he doesn't want the show to stop he, he wants to carry on he wants to win and I was so desperate for that moment and we'd even spoke about it before the match that that's what we're going to do we'll have ourselves like a 10 second stretch where you just don't don't tap just fight it and um I couldn't I I literally couldn't I had to tap just because it was so uncomfortable and that made me realize it made me really feel like if this like in real fighting like this happens you know when someone is hurting when when you're younger and you're shouting at the tv don't tap don't tap and you have no choice but to tap it hurts that was the thing it literally felt like I was a child again watching wrestling but I was actually doing it (laughs) (laughs) That's really cool. Um, Claire, so what, what was at this point, um, the match is just finishing. What's, what's your kind of, what emotions are going through your head and things like that? So, the, I, yeah, so I, this is, again, is one of these moments that really stands out in my mind because I think like you tap with like seven seconds to go or something. Like it was like, like a James Bond bomb, <laughs> like 007 <laughs> and it starts now. And, um, and, um joe and i were sort of like did she tap did she not did she and like there was this like little moment of like kind of a breath where it's like did did she tap in time and then it was like you know the the where's said charlie evans wins and um and i think there are there are a couple of things i've watched the end of this match like quite a lot (laughs) because there's something about the end which is just really incredibly beautiful the crowd are all like just went totally mad and like everyone was on their feet, like spontaneously on their feet. It was just like a, a kind of an amazing moment where no one really had control over their emotions anymore. Um, and then it was just this kind of beautiful moment where you had this kind of hug in the ring and that it was just like this kind of wonderful kind of show of respect, like kind of a kneeling handshake and stuff. And um, I, I think it was one of those moments and they don't happen often when I watch wrestling, um, but one of those moments where I was like, I just love this stuff. <laughs> Like I love pro wrestling and this was why, because like it was just a, 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 everything I just thought would come together. The end was just perfect. Like the timing of it, when you talk about the timing and the trickinesses of doing the 30 minute, the timing for me was just perfect on this end because it was just like, it, it just left enough kind of doubt to make them go, was it in time? Did she hold on? Did she hold on? And it was just it, it, kind of perfect storytelling for me. And like, uh, yeah, just... I genuinely felt like emotional at the end of this match because it had been such a kind of beautiful story that had been told and kind of such a beautiful thing that had been created in that space. Like everyone was so, there was, there was just kind of a warmth about the whole thing. Everyone had just loved it. Uh, yeah, it was just a kind of a really, for me, it was a really, really special moment actually. Tears on commentary and uh, tears on commentary. There were. (laughs) I think tears Tears in the the ring ring. as well. (laughs) Yeah, there were. Uh, Charlie, do you want to talk us through that? Like, especially, I think we had the hug, and then you know people were standing and clapping, and it went on for quite a bit. We both looked over each other, and I just couldn't hold it anymore, and I just started crying. Like, I'm not like a super emotional person anyway. I don't think there's many times in my life where I've cried about wrestling especially not any of my own matches ever oh my god um but I just felt like something special just happened you know like and it wasn't just like a oh yes like we did this it was all us like it was just a, like it was just it felt special for everyone mm. and I think like it's easily like one of my like it's the my most favorite special most prized moment I've ever had in a wrestling ring was just like looking over and be like, Oh my God, like this is the coolest thing I'll ever feel. And mm. it was just special. <laughs> like, Yeah. I think it really, cause I'm I th- looking back on it and I I'm, I'm not a particularly, I'm, I'm quite a sort of stoic person, I guess. Um, but obviously I was moved, but also it, it kind of, um, it, it felt like every like everyone sort of, in, in the room, and I include the you know the fans especially that they that they had helped 
make it, if you know what I mean. Like it was, yeah, it wasn't a sort was, like, of everyone was in this together. Yeah, yeah, I think that's. And cool. I think it was like special as well. Like, I think resurgence holds a special place in my heart, especially because, you know, you've always given me like incredible opportunities where I uh, like. I've always had like cool singles matches and you've given me people that I've wanted to wrestle and allowed me um, creativity and op like open-endedness and freedom to do what I feel is, is the type of wrestling I like. And I think um, it's something completely different because like both my parents are artists and I've always had like a special space, like a place in my heart for art and music and creativity and expressing yourself. And I think, a lot of people kind of lose that when it comes to wrestling. And I think it was so cool that you guys created this thing where it was like, no, 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 wrestling is art. And I thought at the end of that match, I was like, oh no, no, like this isn't just wrestling. It's like this, this is art. And I always, always refer to all of my matches at Resurgence, like as my body of work. And if, if someone wants to see me wrestle, like I'll like first and foremost, give them my Resurgence stuff because I feel so proud of it. Mm. Not just on a wrestling standpoint, but I've just created like, emotion with with my work especially like for myself like i watching that like the i'm woman back i was just like fuck like this is really really cool yeah i always love that expression the, the when wrestlers use that expression to refer to their to their wrestling as a body of work i think it, and in the same way that within this podcast we're trying to explore precisely that like um pro wrestling as a practice as a creative artistic practice and i think i think that yeah really resonates um Awesome. Um, Kanji, you want to follow that? <laughs> <laughs> I think she's oh, no, rambled. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great. No, it's really, uh, really poignant. Um, I was sad we didn't have to have a nice moment backstage, though, because this bitch over here had to <laughs> rush off day and <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, true enough. Yeah. I came back, I didn't even see her, I don't think. I was so good to. I genuinely thought I broke my elbow. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. you're the toughest person I actually know. Like, you're actually tough. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're not fake tough. You're real tough. <laughs> yeah. What was what, Kanji? What was that? What was that like? That going from that you, I guess that euphoria of the finish of the match to that sudden reality. Because I, I was backstage with you at that point, and it was like a huge high to a huge low. Because we weren't. At that point, we weren't sure what you'd done to your elbow. But luckily, it wasn't that severe. But at the time, it certainly felt it felt like it was possibly one of the worst inju the worst injury we had at resurgence. Yeah. Um, well, when it happened, and when I was in the ring, I didn't think it was anything serious. I just think I just needed to put some ice on it. That's all I thought, and it, it will be fine. Um, so I just kept it close to me in in the ring, and just think it was nothing serious. Um, and as soon as I got back through the curtain and just took a breath, um, it just became this, this pain that just kind of took over and I just couldn't think about anything else. Um, it was so painful. I, like I remember going upstairs and just resting my head on the wall, holding my elbow, panicking, thinking I, this is bad. Like. I, I really hurt myself. This is bad. And I was scared because I thought, how long am I going to be out now? Do you know, I've just had this amazing match, which I think I, fi I felt like this match had pushed me forward so much in my ability and in my skills that now am I going to have to have time off because of this? Um, and it was so painful. I was so worried. Um, and but at the same time, I was still feeling all this like overwhelmment from the match we just had and, mm -hmm. and pride from what we just, what we just put on. Um, so I was so scared, but when we went to A&E, obviously, um, everyone who was around me was so, you know, the management of research was so, so quick and, um, professional. And as soon as we got to A and E, we were seen to, and it was just that sigh of relief when he said it's not broken. And then I felt a bit silly because I was like, <laughs> I've had, I've, I've had some tablets. The pain has settled a bit. He's told me it's not broken. And I was like, <laughs> I feel like an idiot. Like now I've got to tell everyone it's not broken. 
<laughs> which I am so thankful it wasn't broken. But I just can't believe how, how painful it was. Never. It was more painful. I'd say it went hand in hand with how painful it was when I actually broke my arm. In October. Yeah. 100%. And how weird is that? Mm. That's so strange. I think because, like, it was such, like, a heightened sense of emotion as well. Like, everything... Like, I remember that, like, after that night, I couldn't, like, I couldn't sleep till, like, four or five in the morning because I would just, like, I had, like, such adrenaline or, like, I don't, I don't even know what it was, but, like, I don't think that's ever happened mm. to me. I, like, besides, like, death matches because you just, like, hyped up on whatever the hell you've just done. But, like, after that match, I just couldn't sleep because I was just, like, oh, my God, like, this, like, I just, everything feels heightened. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I know that I remember speaking to John, uh, John Kirby, who's the, one of the co-owners of Resurgence, who went with went, went with you, Kanji, to the hospital, didn't he? And yeah. I think when we were deciding to go, everyone was like, just get John to go with her because he, he'll just go into, like, dad mode. Hell yeah. <laughs> He's <think>, good at that. <laughs> yeah, I think he was... He, I came downstairs and, like, some of, like, her family came back and I was like, oh, no. And they're like, where is she? I'm like, oh, no, don't hate me. <laughs> Um, yeah, okay, so I think that, that really kind of brings us to an end. Um, what I want to ask before we finish is, um, firstly, if, if you've got anything that you want to, if you want to bring up that we haven't covered? Um, and then also, Claire, if you've got any kind of more, more questions that you want to ask or anything like that. Um, no, I think I'm, I'm happy with everything yeah, we've yeah. mentioned already. Awesome. Yeah, it was a really fascinating chat and um, I'm looking forward to listening to it back and hopefully the Resurgence fans and other fans of wrestling will get something from this. I'm sure they will. Um, do you want to, if, if you know them off the top of your head, do you want to tell people where they can find you on Twitter and things like that and, and merchandise and that sort of thing? Charlie first. Um, I think both my Instagram and Twitter are at Charlie Evans Pro. Um, Medusa Complex bigcartel.com I think is my merch store um don't know if there's anything on it at the minute um but come follow me on twitter I tweet funny shit so it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> and then kanji uh yeah I'm just on I'm on twitter at kanji dooku and on instagram kanji underscore dooku awesome and then my yeah, final merchandise store woman <laughs> <laughs> You keep telling me that every time you see me. I know, because you're great and you deserve to make money off wrestling. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, one last question. What, what are you most looking forward to about wrestling coming back when it does come back? I just think those, like, those first shows back with, you know, where everyone's had this, this break from seeing and interacting with like a live wrestling is going to be like, nothing we've ever experienced before i think i think especially in the uk because we're so lucky and we have so much wrestling and we're like we could go to four shows a week if we really wanted to which is absolutely like mind-blowing to me coming from australia where i used to wrestle twice a month and i thought it was like the coolest thing ever um but i think having a break from stuff like that is going to give people um like a sense of excitement again and i just think those first few matches back of everyone is just going to go hard. Like, <laughs> so that's going to be fun. I'm worried about, uh, you know, ring cardio and stuff like that, but I, I just can't wait to have the feeling of wrestling in front of a crowd again. Awesome. Kanji? Yeah, I think the same. Um, I just can't wait to have that feeling again to, you know, be in a ring and just almost relax in in that context of in a wrestling match, you know, and just celebrate who we are and what we love together, you know, share that passion by doing wrestling instead of just being stuck at home now and, and watching and talking about it. I think we're definitely ready to just do it. <laughs> uh, Claire? Um, yeah, I, I'm missing wrestling more than I thought I would. <laughs> I know, I'm just like, that's fine, I can just get on with writing stuff, it's not a problem. But actually, I'm really missing resurgence, and I think the thing that I'm missing, like, kind of trans with both of what you're saying, really, is, like, the people. Like, I just think that mm. the, like, 
the community that there is in wrestling is just a really quite a kind of beautiful thing really and people they're some good, really good folks and I kind of miss hanging out with them so I think for me what I'm looking forward to the most is like hanging out with the resurgence crew again and just um yeah and just just kind of just just being together and enjoying what we love yeah awesome okay um so yeah thank you thank you to Charlie Evans and thank you to Kanji and thank you to our co-host Claire Warden Thank you for listening to The Grappling Arts. If you enjoyed the episode, please leave us a review or rating on Spotify and iTunes. And please share it and tell people about the podcast because it really helps get us uh, higher ratings on the um, on those various channels. And for Wrestling Resurgence news, tickets, free matches, video on demand, all of that good stuff, we are Wrestling Resurgence, W underscore Resurgence on Twitter, and on Instagram, and you can search Wrestling Resurgence on Facebook and YouTube. I've been your host, Sam West. Until next time.